in this love of ours, rivals as we all are in the affections of our Reginald, the very hopelessness of our love is a bond that binds us to one another. <laughs> Jealousy is merged in misery, while he, the very sinusier of our eyes and hearts, remains icy and sensible. What have we to strive for? The love of maidens is, to him, as interesting as the taxes. Would that it were. He pays his taxes. <gasps> and cherishes the receipts. Happy receipts. Oh. <sighs> Fools. I beg your pardon. Fools and blind. The man loves, wildly loves. But whom? None of us. No, none of us. His weird fancy has lightened for the nonce. On patience, the village milkmaid. On patience? Oh, it cannot be. But yesterday I caught him in her dairy, eating fresh butter with a tablespoon. <laughs> Today he is not well. Ah. <laughs> but patience boasts that she has never loved, that love is to her a sealed book. Oh, he cannot be serious. Tis but a passing fancy. Twill quickly wear away. Oh, oh Reginald, if you but knew what a wealth of golden love is waiting for you, stored up in this rugged old bosom of mine, the milkmaid's triumph would be short indeed. <laughs> On that mad infatuation, I thank thee, love, thou comest not to me. Far be I free from thy ministration than dukes or duchesses who love and be. Tis patience, happy girl. 
Mentality of delirium, an acute accentuation of supremest mm, ecstasy, which the earthy might easily mistake for mm, indigestion. But it is not indigestion, it is aesthetic transfiguration. Enough of babble. Come, but stay, I have some news for you. The 35th Dragoon Guards have halted in the village and are even now on their way to this very spot. The 35th Dragoon Guards? They are fleshly men of full habit. <laughs> we care nothing for Dragoon Guards. But bless me, you were all engaged to them a year ago. A year ago? My poor child, you don't understand these things. A year ago, they were very well in our eyes. But since then, our tastes have been etherealized. Our perceptions exalted. Come, it is time to lift up our voices in morning carol to our Reginald. Let us to his presence. <laughs> Thank you. 
Receipt for that popular mystery note to the world is a heavy drug. Yes, 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 yes. Take all the remarkable people in history, rattle them off to a popular chore. Yes, 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 yes. The plaque of Lord Nelson on board of the victory, genius of Bismarck devising a plan, the humor of feeling which sounds contradictory, coolness <laughs> of pageant about the trip pan. Oh. The science of Judy, the eminent musical wit of Macaulay, who wrote of Queen Anne, the pathos of Paddy, as rendered by musical style of the Bishop of Sodoran Man, the dash of a Dorsey, the facet of Quackery, narrative powers of Dickens or Thackeray, Victory Manual, Pinkerton Peveril, Thomas Aquinas and Dr. Sacheveril, Tupper and Tennyson, Daniel Defoe, Anthony Trollope and Mr. Keys. of Paddington Pollocky, grace of an orderly scorn and divan, the genius strategic of Caesar or Hannibal, skill of Sir Garnet in thrashing a cannibal, flavor of Hamlet, the stranger, a touch of him, little of man, but not very much of him, Beadle of Burlington, Richardson Show, Mr. McCorber and Madame Tussauds. Yes, 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 yes. that under those circumstances, even toffee would become monotonous. <laughs> yeah, yeah! Poor oh, toffee reads flattery, adulation, and abject deference, carried to such a pitch that I began at last to think that man was born, bent at an angle of 45 degrees. Great heavens, what is there to adulate in me? Am I particularly intelligent? <laughs> or am I a mysterious? <laughs> or excruciatingly witty? <laughs> or unusually accomplished? <laughs> or exceptionally virtuous? <laughs> You're about as commonplace a young man as ever I saw. You are! Exactly. That's it, exactly. That describes me to a T. Thank you all very much. <laughs> well, I couldn't stand it any longer. So I joined this second-class cavalry regiment. In the army, I thought I, I should be occasionally snubbed. Perhaps even bullied. Who knows? The thought was... Rapture. And here I am. Yes, and here are the ladies. The 
But who is the gentleman with the long hair? I don't know. He seems popular. He does seem popular. seem to scan in a rapt, ecstatic way like a literary man who despises female play. I hear plainly all they say, twenty lovesick maidens, they hear as plainly all they say, twenty lovesick maidens, they Transcendental law is monopolizing me. Round the corner I can see each is kneeling on her knee. Round the corner he can see each is kneeling on her knee. God is not this ridiculous, and he's not this preposterous. A lot of things are ridiculous, preposterous. Idealizing you? He has. Good old Bunford. 
God. <laughs> My eyes are open. I droop despairingly. I am soulfully intense. I am limp. And I cling. Finished at last. Finished. <sighs> Are you better now? Yes. Oh, it's you. Yes, I am better now. The poem is finished, and my soul has gone out into it. That was all. It is nothing worth mentioning. It occurs three times a day. Ah, oh, patience! Dear patience! Will it please you? Read it to us, sir. This we supplicate. Oh, shall I? No! I will read it if you beat me. You can if you like. Oh. It is a wild, weird, fleshly thing, yet very yearning, very tender, very precious. Oh, it is oh. called, oh, hollow, hollow, hollow. Is it a hunting song? Oh, no, 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 no. A hunting song? No, it is not a hunting song. It is the wail of the poet's heart on discovering that everything is commonplace. To understand it, cling passionately to one another and think of faint limbs. Good. Oh, hollow! Hollow. Hollow. What time the poet hath hymned, the writhing maid, lithe limbed, quivering on amaranthine as How can he paint her woes, knowing as well he knows that all can be set right with calomel? When from the poet's plinth, the amorous colocynth yearns for the aloe, faint with rapturous thrills. How can he him their throes, knowing, as well he knows, that they are only uncompounded pills? Is it, and can it be, nature hath this decree? Nothing poetic in the world shall dwell, for that in all her works, Something poetic lurks, even in colosin and calomel. I cannot tell. Oh. Oh. How purely fragrant, how earnestly precious. Well, it seems to me to be nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Nonsense? Yes, perhaps. But, oh, what precious nonsense. This is all very well, but you seem to forget that you are engaged to us. Oh, it can never be. You are not Empyrean. You are not Delacroscan. You are not even early English. Oh, be early English, ere it is too late. Red and yellow, primary colours. Oh, South Kensington. We didn't design our uniforms, but we don't see how they could be improved. No, you wouldn't. Still, there is a cobwebby grey velvet with a tender bloom like uh, 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 cold gravy, which made Florentine 14th century trimmed with Venetian leather and Spanish altar lace and surmounted by something Japanese. It matters not what would at least be early English. Come, maidens. <laughs>
Gentlemen, this is an insult to the British uniform, a uniform that has been as successful in the courts of Venus as on the field of Mars. When I first put this uniform on, I said as I looked in the glass, it's one to a million, a ten is a billion, my figure and form will surpass. Gold lace has a charm for the fair, and I've plenty of that and to spare. While allowed the professions, when up to the are eligible everywhere. A fact that I counted upon when I first put this uniform on. I see in color coincidence you don't ever have counted upon. The same thing occurred to me when I first put this uniform on. I said when I first put it on, it is plain to the various dance that every beauty will feel it a duty to yield to its glamour at once. They will see that I'm freely gold laced in a uniform, handsome and chaste. But the peripatetics of long head ascetics are very much more to their taste, which I did accounted upon when I first put this uniform on. I see in coincidence Let me confess, a languid love for lilies does not blight me. Lank limbs and haggard cheeks do not delight me. I do not care for dirty greens by any means. I do not long for all one sees that's Japanese. I am not fond of uttering platitudes in stained glass attitudes. In short, my medievalism's affectation, born of a morbid love, of admiration. If you're anxious for to shine in the highest that it line as a man of culture rare, you must get up all the germs of the transcendental terms and plant them everywhere. You must lie upon the daisies and discourse the novel phrases of your complicated state of mind. The meaning doesn't matter if it's only idle chatter of a transcendental kind. And everyone will say, as you walk your mystic way, if this young man expresses himself in terms to deep for me, why, what a very singularly deep young man this deep young man must be. Be eloquent in praise of the very dull old days which have long since passed away, and convince them, if you can, the reign of good Queen Anne was culture's palmiest day. Of course you will poo-poo whatever's fresh and new and declare it's crude and mean. 
for art stopped short in the cultivated court of the Empress Justine. And everyone will say, as you walk your mystic way, if that's not good enough for him, which is good enough for me, why, what a very cultivated kind of youth this kind of youth must be. Then a sentimental passion of a vegetable fashion must excite your languid spleen. An attachment I'll append to a bashful young potato or a not too French French bean. Though the Philistines will jostle you, will rank us in a parcel of the high aesthetic band. If you walk and pick a dilly with a poppy or a lily in your medieval hand. And everyone will say, as you walk your flowery way, if he's content with a vegetable love, which would certainly not suit me. Why won't a most particularly pure young man, this pure young man must be? Come hither. I'm pleased with thee. The bitter hearted one who finds all else hollow is pleased with thee, for you are not hollow, are you? No, thanks. I've had me dinner. But I beg your pardon, I interrupt you. A life is made up of interruptions. The tortured soul, yearning for solitude, writhes under them. Oh, but my heart is weary. Oh, I'm a cursed thing. Don't go. Really, I'm very sorry. Tell me, girl, do you ever yearn? I yearn my living. <laughs> no, no, no. Do you know what it is to be heart-hungry? Do you know what it is to yearn for the indefinable and yet to be brought face to face daily with a multiplication table? Do you know what it is to seek for oceans and to find puddles? To long for whirlwinds and yet to have to do the best you can with the bellows? That's my case. Oh, I'm a cursed thing. Don't go. If you please, I don't understand you. You frighten me. Oh, don't be frightened. It's only poetry. Well, if that's poetry, I don't like poetry. Don't you? Can I trust her? Patience! You don't like poetry. <laughs> then between you and me, I don't like poetry. It's hollow, unsubstantial, unsatisfactory. What's the use of yearning for Elysian fields when you know you can't get them and would only let them out on building leases if you had them? Sir! Patience! I have long loved you. Let me tell you a secret. I'm not as bilious as I look. <laughs> if you like, I will cut my hair. There is more innocent fun within me than a casual spectator would imagine. You've never seen me frolicsome. Be a good girl, a very good girl, and one day you shall. If you're fond of touch and go jocularity, <laughs> this is the shop for it. Sir, I will speak plainly. In the matter of love, I am untaught. I have never loved but my great aunt. But I am quite certain that under any circumstances, I couldn't possibly love you. You think not? I'm quite sure of it. Quite sure. Quite. <laughs> Very good. Life is henceforth a blank. I don't care what becomes of me. I only ask that you do not abuse my confidence. Though you despise me, I am extremely popular with the other young ladies. And I only ask that you leave me alone and never renew the subject. Certainly. Broken-hearted and desolate, I go. <laughs> oh, to be wafted away 
from this black acyl garment of sorrow, where the dust of an earthly today is the earth of a dusty tomorrow. <laughs> it's a little thing of my own. I call it heart foam. I shall not publish it. Oh, well, patience. Patience! of purity, the abstraction of refinement. It is the one unselfish emotion in this whirlpool of grasping greed. Oh, dear! Oh, oh. Why are you crying? To think I have lived all these years without having experienced this ennobling and unselfish passion. Why, what a wicked girl I must be. For it is unselfish, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Love that is tainted with selfishness is no love. Oh, try, try, try to love. It really isn't difficult if you give your whole mind to it. I'll set about it at once. I won't go to bed until I'm head over ears in love with somebody. <laughs> Noble girl. But is it possible that you have never loved anybody? Oh, yes, one. Oh, oh, my great aunt. Great aunts don't count. Then there's nobody. At least... No, nobody. Not since I was a baby. But that doesn't count either, I suppose. Oh, I don't know. Tell me all about it. Long years ago, fourteen maybe, what a tiny baby another baby played with me, my elder by a year or more. A little child of beauty rare with marvelous eyes and wondrous hair. Who in my child I seem to me, or that a little child should be? I must be in. 
I had no idea that love was a duty. No wonder they all seem so unhappy. Upon my word, I hardly like to associate with myself. I don't think I'm respectable. I'll go at once and fall in love with a stranger. Pretty, pretty maiden, pretty, tell me true. Hey, but I'm truthful, willow, willow, wailing. Have you ever a lover a tangling after you? Can it be that you don't recognize me? Recognize you? No, indeed I don't. Have 15 years so greatly changed me? 15 years? What do you mean? Have you forgotten the friend of your youth? Your little playfellow? Your Archibald! Archibald? Is it possible? Why, let me look. It is! It is! It must be! Oh, how happy I am! I thought we should never meet again! And how you've grown! <laughs> yes, Patience, I am much taller and much stronger than I was. And how you've improved! <laughs> yes, Patience, I am very beautiful. <laughs> But surely that doesn't make you unhappy. Yes, Patience. Gifted as I am with a beauty which probably has not its arrival on earth. <laughs> I am, nevertheless, utterly and completely miserable. Oh, but why? My child love for you has never faded. Conceive, then, the horror of my situation when I tell you that it is my hideous destiny to be madly loved at first sight by every woman I come across. Why do you make yourself so picturesque? <laughs> Why not disguise yourself, disfigure yourself, anything to escape this persecution? No, Patience, that may not be. These gifts, irksome as they are, were given to me for the enjoyment and delectation of my fellow creatures. I am a trustee for beauty. And it is my duty to see that the conditions of my trust are faithfully discharged. And you, too, are a poet. Yes, I am the apostle of simplicity. I am called 
Archibald the All Right. <laughs> For I am infallible. And is it possible that you condescend to love such a girl as I? Yes, Patience, is it not strange? <laughs> I have loved you with a Florentine 14th century frenzy for full 15 years. Oh, marvellous! I have hitherto been deaf to the voice of love. I seem now to know what love is. It has been revealed to me. It is Archibald Grosvenor. Yes, patience, it is. We will never, never part. We will live and die together. I swear it. We both swear it. Oh. oh. But oh, horror. What's the matter? Why, you are perfection. A source of endless ecstasy to all who know you. I know I am. <laughs> well? Then, bless my heart. There can be nothing unselfish in loving you. Merciful powers, I never thought of that. To monopolize those features on which all women love to linger, it would be unpardonable. Why, so it would. Oh, faithful perfection, again you interpose between me and my happiness. Oh, if you were but a thought less beautiful than you are. Would that I were. <sighs> but candor compels me to admit that I am not. Our duty is clear. We must part, and forever. Oh, misery. And yet, I cannot question the propriety of your decision. Farewell, Patience. Farewell, Archibald. But stay. Yes, Patience. Although I may not love you, for you are perfection. There is nothing to prevent your loving me. I am plain, homely, unattractive. Why, that's true. <laughs> the love of such a man as you for such a girl as I must be unselfish. Unselfishness itself? Oh. Not a man would very selfish be.
Exactly so. If I 
fickle crew have deserted Reginald and sworn allegiance to his rival, and all, forsooth, because he has glanced with passing favor on a puning milkmaid. Fools! Of that fancy he was soon weary, and then I, who alone am faithful to him, shall reap my reward. But do not dally too long, Reginald, for my charms are ripe, Reginald, and already they are <laughs> decaying. Better secure me ere I have gone too far. Stouter than I used to be, 
Rapturously these maidens love me, and how hopelessly. Oh, patience, patience, with the love of thee in my heart, what have I for these poor mad maidens? <laughs> but an unvalued pity. Alas, they will die of hopeless love for me, as I shall die of hopeless love for thee. Sir, will it please you, read to us? Yes, child, if you will. What shall I read? One of your own poems. One of my own poems? Better not, my child. They will not cure thee of thy love. <laughs> Mr. Bunthorn used to read us a poem of his own every day. And to do him justice, he read them extremely well. Oh, did he so? <laughs> Very well. Who am I that I should withhold my gifts from you? What am I but a trustee? Here is a decolate, a pure and simple thing, a very daisy. A babe might understand it. To appreciate it, it is not necessary to think of anything at all. Let us think of nothing at all. Gentle Jane was as good as gold. She always did as she was told. <laughs> she never spoke when her mouth was full, or caught blue bottles, their legs to pull. <laughs> or spilt plum jam on her nice new frock, or put white mice in the eight-day clock. <laughs> or vivisected her last new doll. Or fostered a passion for alcohol. And when she grew up, she was given in marriage to a first-class earl who keeps his carriage. <laughs> I believe I am right in saying that there is not one word in that decolate which is calculated to bring the blush of shame to the cheek of modesty. Not one. It is purity itself. Here's another. Teasing Tom was a very bad boy. A great big squirt was his favorite toy. He put live shrimps in his father's boots 
and sewed up sleeves of his Sunday suits. He punched his poor little sister's heads and cayenne peppered their four-post beds. <laughs> he plastered their hair with cobbler's wax and dropped hot tapenies down their backs. The consequence was he was lost totally and married a girl in the Corda Valley. Oh. Mark at you how grandly, how relentlessly the damning catalogue of crime strayed on till retribution, like a poison hawk, came swooping down upon the wrongdoer. <sighs> it was terrible. Oh, sir, you are indeed a true poet, for you touch our hearts. And they go out to you. This is simply cloying. Ladies, I am sorry to appear ungallant, but this is Saturday, and you... And you have been following me about ever since Monday. I should like the usual half-holiday. I would take it as a personal favor if you would kindly allow me to close early today. Oh, sir, do not send us from you. Poor, poor girls. It is best to speak plainly. I know that I am loved by you, but I never can love you in return, for my heart is fixed elsewhere. Remember the fable of the magnet and the churn. But we don't know the fable of the magnet and the churn. Don't you? No! Then I'll sing it for you. Shop, and all around was a loving crop of scissors and needles, nails and knives, offering love for all their lives. But for I'm the magnet, felt no whim. The which charm and iron, it charmed not him. From needles and nails and knives, it's turned for its head, his love on a silver churn. A silver churn. A silver churn. His most aesthetic, very magnetic fancy took this turn. If I can wheedle a knife or a needle, why not a silver churn? His most aesthetic, very magnetic fancy took this turn. If I can wheedle a knife or a needle, why not a silver churn? Express surprise, the needles opened their well drilled eyes, the pen knives fell sharp up, no doubt. The scissors declared themselves cut out. <laughs> the kettle stay boiled with a rage to said. While every nail went off its head, and hither and hither it went from to the happy home and drove them home. It drove them home. It drove them home. While this magnetic, very pathetic lover he lived to learn, by no endeavor can magnet ever attract the silver churn. While this magnetic, very pathetic lover he lived to learn, by no endeavor can magnet ever attract the What is this mysterious fascination that I seem to exercise over all I come across? A curse on my fatal beauty, for I am sick of conquests. Archibald! Patience! I have escaped with difficulty from my Reginald. I wanted to see you so much that I might ask you if you still love me as fondly as ever. Love you? If the devotion of a lifetime... Hold! Unhand me, or I scream. If you are a gentleman, pray remember that I am a novice. But you do love me, don't you? Madly, hopelessly, despairingly. That's right. I never can be yours, but that's right. And you love this bunthorn? 
with a heart whole ecstasy that withers and scorches and burns and stings. It is my duty. Admirable girl. But you are not happy with him. Happy? I am miserable beyond description. That's right. I never can be yours, but that's right. But go now. I see dear Reginald approaching. Farewell, dear Archibald. I cannot tell you how happy I am to know that you still love me. Ah, oh, if I only dared. So, this language to one who is promised to another. Oh, Archibald, think of me sometimes, for my heart is breaking. He is so unkind to me, and you would be so loving. Loving! Advance one step, and as I am a good and pure woman, I scream. Farewell, Archibald. Oh, stop there! Think of me sometimes. Advance at your peril. Once more, adieu. with just now? With dear Archibald. With dear Archibald. Upon my honour, this is too much. A great deal too much. Oh, do be quiet. Crushed again. <laughs> I think he is the noblest, purest, and most perfect being I have ever met. But I don't love him. It is quite true that he is devotedly attached to me, but I don't love him. Whenever he grows affectionate, I scream. It is my duty. I dare say. So do I. Oh, Frank, if I dare say. Why, how could I love him and love you too? You can't love two people at once. Uh -huh. Can't you, though? No, you can't. I only wish you could. I don't believe you know what love is. Yes, I do. There was an happy time when I didn't. But a bitter experience has taught me. Love is a plaintive song, sung by a suffering maid, telling a tale of wrong, telling of hope betrayed, tuned to each changing thought, sorry when he is sad, blind to his every mood.
since that smug-faced idiot came here. Before that, I was admired. I may say, loved. Too mild. Adored. Oh, do let a poet soliloquize. The damsels used to follow me wherever I went. Now they all follow him. Not all. I am still faithful to you. Yes, and a pretty damsel you are. No. Not pretty. Massive. <laughs> but cheer up. I will never leave you. I swear it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I know what it is. It is confounded mildness. They find me too highly spiced, if you please. Maybe I am too highly spiced. Not for my taste. No, but I am for theirs. I'll show the world I can be as mild as he. If they want insipidity, they shall have it. I'll meet this fellow on his own ground and beat him on it. You shall, and I will help you. You will. Oh, Jane, there's a good deal of good in you, after all. <laughs> So go to him and say to him with compliment, I run the go sing hey to you, good day to you, and that's what I shall say. Your style is much too sanctified, your cut is too canonical. Sing bar to you, ha ha to you, and that's what I shall say. I was the poet deal, the poor the journey spectacle. To doubt my information was regarded as heretical, until you cut me off with your placidity hermetical. Sing boo to you, poo poo to you, and that's what I shall say. Sing boo to you, poo poo to you, and that's what I shall say. Sing hey to you, poo pee to you, sing bird to you, ha ha to you, sing go to you, poo to you, ha ha to you, sing boo to you, poo pee to you, sing go to you, ha ha to you, sing go to you, and that's what I shall say. And that's what I shall say. Ba boo, ba boo, and that's what I shall say. Tell him that unless he will consent to be more jocular. Sing boo to you, poo poo to you, and that's what you should say. To cut his curly hair and stick an eyeglass in his ocular. Sing boo to you, ha ha to you, and that's what you should say. To stop his conversation full of people and of quiddity. To dine on chops and roly poly pudding with their vidity. He'd better clear away with all convenient rapidity. Sing hey to you, good day to you, and that's what you should say. Sing boo to you, poo poo to you, and that's what I shall say. Sing hey to you, good day to you, sing day to you, ha ha to sing ball to you, poo poo to you, and that's what you shall say. Sing hey to you, good day to you, sing ball to you, ha ha to you, sing ball to you, and that's what I shall say. And that's what I shall say. Ba, boom, ba, boom, and that's what I shall say. I'll tell you, 
Because I'm blessing you from self to be more jocular. Sing boo to you, boo boo to you, and that's what you should say. To cut his curly hair and stick an eyeglass in his ocular. Sing ba to you, ha ha to you, and that's what you should say. To stop his conversation full of ripples and a pretty tea to dine on chops and roly poly pudding with their beef to tea. He better clear away with open beanie and rapidity. Sing hey to you, good day to you, and that's what you should say. Sing a boo to you, boo boo to you, and that's what I shall say. Sing hey to you, good day to you, say right to you, ha ha to you, say boo, boo boo to you, and that's what you shall say. Sing hey to you, good day to you, say boo to you, ha ha to you, say boo, and that's what I shall say. Boo boo boo, and that's what I shall say. Ba ba ba, and that's what I. of making a lasting impression on these young ladies is to become as ascetic as they are. Oh, no doubt. The only question is how far we've succeeded in doing so. I don't know why, but I've an idea that this is not quite right. I don't like it. I never did. I don't see what it means. I do it. But I don't like it. My good friend, the question is not whether we like it, but whether they do. They understand these things, we don't. Now, I shouldn't be surprised if uh, this were effective enough. At a distance? Well, I can't help thinking we're a little stiff at it. It would be extremely awkward if we were to be struck so. 
Oh, I don't think we shall be struck so. Perhaps we're a little awkward at first, but everything must have a beginning. Oh, here they come. Attention! <laughs> oh, Sophia, see, see, the immortal fire has descended on them, and they are of the inner brotherhood. Perceptibly intense and consummately utter. Oh, Botticellian. Mm. Oh, Fry Angelican. Oh, Art, we thank thee for this boon. I'm afraid we're not <laughs> quite right. Not supremely, perhaps, but oh, so all but. Eh, hey, Sophia, are they not quite to all but? They are indeed jolly utter. I wonder what the inner brotherhood usually oh. recommend for cramp. <laughs> Ladies, we will not deceive you. We are doing this at some personal inconvenience with a view of expressing the extremity of our devotion to you. We trust it's not without its effect. Oh, we will not deny that we are much moved by this proof of your attachment. Oh, yes, your conversion to the principles of aesthetic art in its highest development has touched us deeply. And if Mr. Grosvenor should remain obdurate, which we have every reason to believe he will. I wish they'd make haste. Oh, we are not prepared to say that our yearning hearts will not go out to you. By sections of threes, rapture. Oh, 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 it's extremely good. For beginners, it's admirable. The only question is, who will take who? Oh, the Duke chooses first as a matter of course. Oh, I couldn't think of it. You really are too good. Nothing of the kind. You are a great matrimonial fish. And it's only fair that each of these ladies should have a chance of hooking you. Now, it's perfectly simple, observe. Suppose you choose Angela, I take Sophia, Major takes nobody. Suppose you choose Sophia, Major takes Angela, I take nobody. Suppose you choose neither, I take Angela, Major takes Sophia. Clear as day! <laughs> If Sophia I choose to marry, I shall be fixed up for life. Then the colonel need not marry, Angela can be his wife. In that case, unprecedented single, I shall live and die. I shall have to be contented with their heart and sympathy. He will have to be contented with our heart and sympathy. In the case of resident and single, I will live and die. I will have to be contented with a heart and sympathy. I will have to be contented with a heart and sympathy. I will have to be contented with a heart and sympathy. I will have to be contented with a heart and sympathy. Angie, I determine at my wedding she'll appear decked in diamond and ermine. Major Ben can take Sophia. In the case of precedent, it's in Ingle, I shall live and die. I shall have to be contented with the heart of sympathy. He will have to be contented with the heart of sympathy. In the case of precedent, it's in the will live and die. He will have to be contented with the heart and sympathy. He will have to be contented with the heart and sympathy.
It is very pleasant to be alone. It is pleasant to be able to gaze at leisure upon those features which all others may gaze upon at their goodwill. <laughs> oh, I am a very Narcissus. It's no use. I can't live without admiration. Ever since Grosvenor came here, insipidity has been at a premium. <gasps> Is there? Ah, oh, Bunthorn, come here. Look. <laughs> Very graceful, isn't it? But allow me, I haven't seen it. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Grace. Oh, good gracious, not that. This. You don't mean that, but. I'm in no mood for trifling. And what is amiss? Ever since you came here, you have entirely monopolized the affections of the young ladies. I don't like it, sir. My dear sir, how can I help it? They are the plague of my life. My dear Mr. Bunthorne, with your personal disadvantages, you can have no idea of the inconvenience of being madly loved at first sight by every woman you meet. Sir, until you came here, I was adored. Exactly. Till I came here. That's my grievance. I cut everybody out. I assure you, if you could only suggest some means whereby, consistently with my duty to society, I could escape these inconvenient attentions, you would earn my everlasting gratitude. I'll do so at once. However popular it may be with the world at large, your personal appearance is highly objectionable to me. It is? <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. How can I express my gratitude? By making a complete change at once. Your conversation must henceforth be perfectly matter-of-fact. You must cut your hair and have a back party. Back party? Back party, sir. In appearance and costume, you must be absolutely commonplace. Uh, no. Uh, pardon me. That's impossible. Take care. When I am thwarted, I am very terrible. <laughs> I can't help that. I am a man with a mission, and that mission must be fulfilled. I don't think you quite appreciate the consequences of thwarting me. I don't care what they are. Suppose I don't go so far as to say that I would do it, but suppose for one moment that I were to curse Sir! you. Ah, ha, 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 very well. Take care. But surely you would never do that. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it would be an extreme measure, no doubt. Still... But you would not do it. I am sure you would not. Oh, Mr. Bunthorne, reflect. You had a mother once? Never. <laughs> then you had an aunt? <laughs> ah, I see you had. By the memory of that aunt, I implore you to pause ere you resort to this last fearful expedient. Oh, Mr. Bunthorne, reflect. Reflect. I must not allow myself to be unmanned. It is useless. Consent at once. Or may a nephew's curse hold. Are you absolutely resolved? Absolutely. Will nothing shake you? Nothing. I am adamant. Very good. Then I yield. You what? I yield. You swear it. I do cheerfully. I have long wished for a reasonable pretext for such a change as you suggest. It has come at last. I do it on compulsion. Victory. I triumph. Let my go off to door, a damsel's a score, all sighing and burning and clinging and yearning will follow me as before. I shall with culture taste, distinguished gems from paste, and high little little barrancas and little if I pronounce it chaste. A most intense young man, a soulful eyed young man, an ultra poetical, super aesthetical, out of the way young man. Conceive me if you can, an everyday young man, a commonplace type with a stick and a pipe and a half in black and tan. Think suburban hops, or fun and Monday pops, who's fond of his dinner and doesn't get dinner on bottle beer and chops. A commonplace young man, a matter of fact young man, a steady and solidly jolly back holiday every day young man, a Japanese young man, a blue and white young man, Francesca Lo Rimini, Nimini, Pimini, Je ne sais quoi young man, a Chancery Lane young man, a Somerset House young man, a very delectable, highly respectable, Trapani Bus young man, a paladin thin young man. 
A haggard and lank young man. A greenery, yellowy, grove in a gallery, foot in the grave, young man. A school and cross, young man. A hall and James, young man. A pushing young particle, what's the next article? What a low house, young man. Conceive me if you can. A matter of fact, young man. An alphabetical, a harrispetical, every day, young man. Conceive me if you can. A matter of fact, young man. An alphabetical, a harrispetical, every day, young man. Distinguished gems and paste, and high little little bull rank as a little if I pronounce it chaste. A most intense young man, a soul for life young man, an antipoetical, super ascetical, out of the way young man. Conceive me if you can, an everyday young man, a commonplace type with a stick and a pipe with a heart and black and tan, who thinks suburban hops, or found the Monday pops, who's fond of his dinner and doesn't get dinner on bottled beer and chops. A commonplace young man, a matter of fact young man. A steady and stolidly jolly bank holiday every day, young man. A Japanese young man. A blue and white young man. And just get a remedy, nimini, pinini, je ne sais quoi, young man. A chancery lane, young man. A Somerset house, young man. A very delectable, highly respectable, thrippany bus, young man. A pallid and thin, young man. A haggard and lank, young man. A greenery, yellowy, grove in a gallery, fit in the grave, young man. A sewer across, young man. A hole and James, young man. A pushy young particle, what's the next article? What a new house, young man. Conceive me if you can. A matter of fact, young man. And a half of medical, a half of medical, every day, young man. Conceive me if you can. A matter of fact, young man. And a half of medical, a half of medical, every day, young man. in disposition. You have indeed. Oh, that has changed. I have reformed. I have modelled myself upon Mr. Grosvenor. Henceforth, I am mildly cheerful. My conversation will blend amusement with instruction. Oh, I shall still be aesthetic, but my aestheticism will be of the most pastoral kind. Mm. Oh, Reginald, is all this true? Oh, yes, quite true. Observe how amiable I am. Oh, Reginald, how long will this last? With occasional intervals for rest and refreshment. <laughs> for as long as I do. Oh, Reginald, I'm so happy I cannot express the joy I feel at this change. It will no longer be a duty to love you, but a pleasure, a rapture, an ecstasy. Oh, my darling. <gasps> <gasps> But, oh, horror! What's the matter? Is it quite certain that you have absolutely reformed? That you are henceforth a perfect being, utterly free from defect of any kind? Oh, yes, quite certain. I have sworn it. Then I never can be yours. Why not? Love, to be pure, must be absolutely unselfish. And there can be nothing unselfish in loving so perfect a being as you have now become. No, stop, wait a bit. I, 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 I don't want to change. I relax. I'll, I'll be as I was. Yes, yes. No, interrupted. <laughs> Sure and cross, young man. A steady and solid, jolly bank holiday every day, young man. We swear as a world to girls, and that is the way it goes. We're pretty little happy, we're too many to be every day, young girls. Angela, Ella, Sophia, what does this mean? 
mean? It means that Archibald, the all right, cannot be all wrong. And if the all right chooses to discard aestheticism, it proves that aestheticism ought to be discarded. Oh, Archibald, Archibald, I'm shocked, surprised, horrified. Hey, I can't help it. <laughs> I'm not a free agent. I do it on compulsion. Why, this is terrible. Go. I shall never set eyes on you again. But, oh, joy! What's the matter? It is quite, quite certain that you will always be a commonplace young man. Always? I've sworn it. Why, then, there's nothing to prevent my loving you with all the fervour at my command. Why, that's true! My Archibald! My patience! <laughs> oh. Crushed again. <laughs> Cheer up. Debate internal, I on Lady Jane decide, and she now may take the Colonel Sophia be the major's bride. In that case, unprecedented single, I must live and die. I shall have to be contented with the Judith Paul in life. He will have to be contented with the Judith Paul in Unprecedented single, he must live and die. He will have to be contented with the Julie Holy Life. Great and great, the one and only, 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 the one and